I want to give you an idea of the proposed location of the pinstock, the turbine building, and how it's going to be laid out in this particular location. If you follow this concrete abutment wall until you can't see it anymore, at the very end is where they propose to put a building, a 4,000 square foot building. You'll have to pull out some of those trees and it's supposed to be nestled in there somehow, somewhat camouflaged beneath the abutment wall. From that building, they're going to run a diameter pipe of about 9 to 10 feet through a valve building. And I think there is a uh, requirement to be 50 feet from the edge of the abutment for a riparian right-of-way. And it's going to parallel that abutment wall, come in here underneath the dam, and out that way for about 100 feet and supposedly lay on the surface of the bottom of the reservoir. They're going to cut the top of off the top of the pinstock off for the access for the water to come through and put up these screens to keep fish, hopefully, and more certainly the debris from being sucked down into the, the pipe. Now, the concern I have is once again, there's a roadway that they're going to have to maintain or improve in order to drive in all the equipment to make this project. So this area is just now really in its prime recovery from the initial dam construction. In order to do this project, they're going to have to have staging areas. They're going to have to clear out a couple of areas, probably about the size of maybe almost a football field, in a couple spots and to dump all the mud and all the debris so it doesn't wash into the river, which is a good thing. But they're going to have to clear out that vegetation. Uh, as you'll see later in the video, we have a picture of a bald eagle sitting in one of those far cottonwood trees down there. So that's going to be right next to that cottonwood tree. They're going to have to take out all these trees. The in this area is known rattlesnakes that are endangered. Uh, local kids come up here and catch rattlesnakes. I've seen them. I've had a couple come through my backyard. Also, there's, uh, we had a black bear visited our garbage can one night. Uh, we have witnesses of seeing that one. I've seen fox and, of course, a variety of bird and wildlife on this side. Now, I'm asking you, how green is this? Let's take a look here. What do we got? An area of recovery, bald eagle, winter foraging sites, rattlesnakes. I know there's a talk of a spotted out type habitat because of the large trees on the embankment. Now, let's look over to this other side. Oh, look, there, look at that nice field. They even mow it. Look at there, they got mowing tracks in there where they've mowed it recently. That looks like a pretty good staging area. Oh, well, we have an asphalt road. Look at that. Oh, well, they didn't want that road. They could use that road. That would help them, you know, maybe monitor the dam a little bit. I'm sure they put a pipe in through dirt before. Uh, hmm. Gee. I don't know. Might be a little tough decision, which is a little more green, wouldn't you think? Okay. This is the access road for the proposed hydroelectric project. As you can see, it's an old roadway that deserves or will require lots of maintenance. The, in the last two or three years there's at least seven or eight tree falls across the road. This is a normal sort of thing that happens and um, so a lot of maintenance that needs to be done in this area in order to make this area accessible. They're going to have to improve the road for heavy truck equipment and other construction equipment. Now remember there's a bald eagle pair, a uh, residential pair of bald eagles that live in this vicinity that winter, um, that forage during the winter during this area. So as you try to improve this road, the forage perches or roosting areas all along this river are going to be disturbed by the truck traffic and all the other construction traffic. So as we go down this road, we're going to take a look at other little sites of other examples of tree falls. These, there's a tree that's currently has fallen here. We've got another one being un, undercut in the, this embankment. These are all eventually probably going to fall. 
There's one back there that needs to be looked at if this is going to be a major roadway. There are evidence of trees here that have already been cut up and pushed away. Uh, this has occurred about two years ago. This one's new and there's a couple more sites on down. This is uh, the same road entering into the vicinity of the roosting area for foraging of the bald eagle. Up in the tree is the silhouette of the eagle itself. It's his favorite hangout. Notice how the road goes very close to the foraging tree. There's a little bit of a disturbance going to happen while they construct this project in terms of the roosting area for the wintering foraging of this mated pair. And that, in turn, will affect the fledgling success of their young of that particular year. That's in several documents. Wow. He's a little skittish. As I approach, he'll probably move off. Go ahead and meow. Go ahead, keep going. Now, he's rested or roosted across the river. Oh, here's his other mated pair. The only reason I know that that's the mated pair is because the other day another younger eagle came into this territory and there was a territory dispute. It was quite dramatic. It lasted for five minutes. They flew for approximately in the air and the intruder got tired of flying, landed in a fir tree. The eagle that's the resident here landed and it was a stare down. Uh, and then I thought the resident eagle was going to give up, but he flew off, quickly circled back, landed in a branch above him, did another stare down, and then lunged at the intruder with claws, talons ready to go. The intruder took that as a final message and left. It was very dramatic. So it tells me that if this is so important as in a foraging area where you can have a territory dispute of that magnitude, then it has some sort of impact about their resources, about their particular place where they're going to do their nesting. So this is critical information. It's not on paper, it's not discussed, and it's kind of a shame.